welcome. So if you're in a hurry, I predict the questions that you want me to answer. The EEG test is painless and boring. However, if you stick until the end, you may see that I might contradict myself just a little bit. And I will be providing a lot of tips that can be helpful, so if you're in a hurry, you may want to consider coming back later. And for those who are not in a hurry, let's get to in the video. An EEG is an abbreviation of electroencephalogram um, test, uh, which measures the brain activity. EEG. The routine EEG, which takes about 20 to 30 minutes, done in a technician's office with um, or with without a doctor, and then there is uh, the video EEG with sleep deprivation and the EEG without sleep deprivation, and then there's an EEG that is with video recording, uh, can be done for several days. And then there is invasive video EEG, uh, sorry, invasive EEG, which is somewhat rare and it's in very complicated cases of uh, epilepsy where are the electrode placed inside the brain. What can it detect? Usually the test is performed to catch seizure activity. That's the most common cause for the EEG test. However, it can uh, detect Alzheimer's, brain tumors, um, sleep apnea, sleep disorders in general, um, and um, in cases of brain death, there will be no brain activity, obviously. If you have an upcoming EEG test, uh, what you should be doing before the test is as recommended by your physicians. However, there are some general rules that you might need to follow as in um, you need to go with um, your hair completely clean so you if you have it re recommended like within the day and you have some time in the morning it's recommended that you will be showering in the morning without applying any deodorants, creams, oils, gel, anything into your hair that can interact with the small discs that will be placed later into your scalp. So you may feel uncomfortable and a little bit itchy if you're, uh, you know, accustomed to pouring creams or something into your skin. But generally, you're recommended not to do so so the discs can uh, be attached to your clean scalp and not be, you know, interfere with other chemicals or products into your skin. Uh, as well as, usually doctor will recommend you to continue your uh, activities as, you, as usual. However, sometimes you are recommended if you are having a sleep deprived EEG to go without sleeping for several days, a day or two, it really depends. The procedure of the EEG. First, the routine EEG, and I will not talk about the invasive one because I don't know about it. The routine EEG usually is done in the technician's office with your doctor present, or not, because the results can, are sent to him after the test is done. And it's done by the technician placing small discs into your scalp with like what they will be spraying something like a hairspray and it smells like <clears throat> like uh, you know like uh, the nail polish remover it smells like that the acetone even worse uh, so uh, they would be spraying and attaching it to your scalp and each um, disc has a special area to go into so they're not randomly putting them into your scalp there is actually kind of like a map for each wire and I, I don't know if that's a universal code for this but even each color can be can you know uh, reflect a certain area in the brain and same with the wave when it's attached to the computer so first the discs go to uh, your scalp 
and are sprayed with like a hairspray but it's not a hairspray and then there is a long wire and it goes into a computer so this is how the small discs for the routine EEG are done but if you're going for the prolonged video EEG uh, and they will be attaching more discs and sometimes they will be also adding like an ECG like um, to, to measure pressure uh, you know heart to them etc and um, the, um, the number of the, di the discs are more that's what I said and then they will be covering it with like a cap to prevent them from moving around because you will be spending several days with that hat and it is heavy that's why it will ache and in my condition because I've had 10 brain surgeries so far my scalp and my skull are so sensitive to touch so it aches me when they spray uh, with, the, with the chemicals that they do to attach the electrodes to the scalp it's insanely painful even though those um, scars probably are healed like some of them were somewhat fresh you know uh, that's why they were like delaying some of my EEGs however uh, even the old ones um, they would hurt they would hurt with when they are spraying that chemical to my scalp and because the smell is so strong what I used to do and it was the corona pandemic usually um, when I was doing so many EEGs and we have my seizure activity was just over the roof uh, I would be wearing two masks and I wouldn't be covering them just for my nose and mouth I would be completely spreading them into my face so I don't get any of the spray into my skin because this is how sensitive I am and I will be asking the technicians for extra masks so I know it would look silly but because uh, I would have um, breathing problem because of my uh, vocal dystonia and general dystonia uh, you know my breathing gets so shallow because all the skeletal muscles are because of the coughing are getting spastic so I do this as a precautionary other people may not want to but usually it's like I bet you might need this tip because it's just like so much and they would be spraying like a cloud of this heavy chemical to attach the discs correctly into your skull. Routine video EEG. After the test is done, they remove the uh, discs and you're, you're off you go. And it usually lasts from 20 to 30 minutes with applying the discs, 40 minutes maximum, to 45 minutes, let's say and around like half an hour trying to rip them off your hair but if you have the prolonged video issue with cameras you will be sent to the department of neurology usually i had a private room however i know there's a lot of cases where you would have a roommate or something like that um but i've always been in a private room i don't know luck and then in that stay you have the, the cap that's attached to your uh, head now and all the wires will be loose and when you're guided to your room they will be uh, attaching those uh, end of the electrodes into what looks like a server and it's attached to a computer that will you will be seeing yourself from your bed any sneeze any movement, if you're talking, if you're blinking, uh, anything will be seen on the screen and your, uh, the, your, the room is uh, provided with camera and you're advised to stay within the range of the camera like so don't wander off so much. So in your room you have this uh, wires and they're attached to a bag, a small bag like a fanny bag and you can hold it and it's kind of heavy around one and a half kilos I would say and it's full of wires and you can wear it like a crossbody bag and the length of the wires are long enough only for you in my case when I was hospitalized for the AEG 
um, I don't know about other countries and other hospitals around across the world, it was only enough for me to wander inside my room, clean my table, you know, small activities, and um, go to the toilet. And even to the toilet, it was such a hassle to navigate my way without tripping over the uh, wires and just like, okay, it was actually disgusting that I had no handles to hang my, um, the, the, the cross body bag over the wires when I was going to the toilet, so I kind of had to leave it outside my door because it disgusts me. I'm not sure about the rest of people, the population. So I had to leave it. I was like bending over the toilet. It was a mess. So, and you can continue doing whatever that you want to do. You can have a phone call. You can eat. Uh, if you're uh, advised to take your medication, you can take your medication, watch TV, read books, all the things, you can do it. So if you have this uh, test asked to be performed because of your seizure activity, what happens uh, when they catch a seizure is that they will just let it happen. Um, they will not give you uh, shots. Um, like usually I got diazepam shots or um, I don't know other stuff, but I usually would have um, shots right on my table and on different the hospital says for my hydrocephalus mainly uh, because I got so many seizures and they had to intervene like very directly because of how severe they would be. But when uh, you are having an, an, a seizure while you're having an EEG exam, they would let it happen. However, um, the team would do just first aid, lying you on your left side, you know, tilting the bed a little bit so you don't get injured. And uh, during my stay, that the bed actually was not padded. Um, however, um, they would, you know, be going like around you most of the time, making sure that you're safe. And during this phase, when you are in your room, you have control buttons. The first one is the regular call button if you want to call a nurse, if you want to have a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, if you don't have somebody with you in the room to prepare it for you. And of course you can't even reach the kitchen and there's no kitchen in the room. And even if, sometimes even if you have like stuff, sometimes you need something, you know, so you can call a nurse or if you're feeling something weird, that's the call button. And then they would give you another uh, button that's similar to uh, the call button but it's not the call button and I believe the call button is always in red the other one was kind of like grayish and again it depends on the hospital that you're staying in and that button uh, was advised to push on it every time I felt there's something weird happening because seizures uh, are 40 types and sometimes uh, People would have, you know, confusion, uh, partial seizures, you know, complex partial, you know, there's a lot of seizure absence, the whole thing. So every time I was advised to, every time I would feel something weird happening, even if it's just an aura, my aura, feeling weird, which is feeling weird, fatigued, kind of like a little cramp in my left leg, or confused by, by when it feels like it, I'm in the middle of dreaming, that's my aura. I was advised to push to push that button and it creates kind of like a bookmark for them to see because they don't actually look into the entire um, footage of the waves and the camera. They have tools to kind of crop all the unnecessary uh, details because it's prolonged, it's for hours, it's for pages and pages and pages, you know, you can only imagine the length of the test and if you just like imagine how many pages you would be writing if you're typing from beginning of the test until you're released day in day out you know like sleep and day sleep and night uh, so you can only imagine how long the, the the waves are going to be so they have the tools and then what they have in the room when you're inside the room you have the the bag that's kind of holding all the wires that's coming from your head 
measuring the brain activity. And then you have uh, for the pulse either uh, like a clip or kind of like a little plaster around your finger. The other one caused me blisters, it was horrendous. And I used to sometimes place it from one finger to another, but it had to be uh, kind of like, um, it had to be so firm on the finger, so it caused me so many blisters along the way because my EEGs were so long and just like nuts. And if it's not attached correctly, it will not catch the pulse. The importance of catching the pulse is when somebody's having a seizure, usually they would have shortness of breath. I don't know, that's for my me, my case when it comes to grandma. That's I'm only speaking from my experience, so I'm not sure what the other experience is, I'm sorry. That you would have a rapid uh, pulse and then it would go into like a, an alarm and the hospital, the rapid response team would come and they would do the first aid for seizures. So sometimes when I was having like a like an aura, I would call do the call button and from the nurse and it would be around me beside the bed. And uh, sometimes I was not fortunate enough to um, do this and then the, I have had a seizure and um, the rapid response team were called. So after the seizure, what happens is first it's a good thing to have a seizure when you're having this test I know seizures are horrible the whole thing but the purpose of the test usually if you're going to have the test to catch the epileptic uh, waves um, it's a good thing because you will now have a seizure recorded on camera and the brain waves so your doctor later would look into it and see where is it coming from and you know the whole thing so it's bad to have seizures but when you are within the care of a team and there's somebody like professional recording happening it's good and what happens when you're having is after you have a seizure the doctors they would come the, the, the room would be crowded, again, they will not intervene, they will not give you medication, uh, you know, like to stop risk medication or, you know, unless there is some kind of a danger to your life, they would do that. However, other than that, they wouldn't. And they would be asking you questions, time, date, repeat after me, all of the things, and look into the light, and, you know, like, don't close your eyes, the whole thing. And, uh, to me, the natural response after the seizure is like, I just want to go to sleep. So it was so hard to uh, comply with the doctor's orders at that time. And they wouldn't let you sleep. And I would like be kind of like forcing it. Like they want to look into your eyes because I, I read somewhere, and I'm not sure why, uh, where, sorry that um, how the eyes look like after the seizure can um, detect if it's epileptic seizure or not. I, I really don't know, but it's something that I've read and I'm not sure how to get back to it. So if you know about it, please write down in the comments. And then you're asked about to, to repeat lines. I, I remember I was asked to say my name or repeat hello. And usually people with epilepsy know this. Before and after a seizure, it's so hard to talk regularly. And usually would make like gibberish uh, talk. It doesn't make sense. It's like somebody is turning into a child. And I'm not saying this about like uh, my vocal dystonia and my job being diverted. That's something like a different condition. However, it would be like, uh, 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 uh. So, when I would have a seizure, I remember one time I was asked to say hello. I was like, ha, ha, ha. It, it's so hard to talk and it would last for uh, kind of like an hour to regain the strength to talk and to regain, and several hours to regain the strength of the body to actually do any physical activity. It's, it's so body wrecking is it's so intense however that's not the point of the video so is the test painful um 
The test is not painful. However, the spray that you're using, if you're having sensitivity in your skin, your valve allergy, it might hurt uh, locally. And to me, like I said, I I would put mask over masks over my uh, like face, entire face, to cover it from the spray because it, you would be surrounded with a cloud of this chemical around you. And I would be coughing so bad and we have my eye watering and coughing uncontrollably like they would need to calm me down even though I don't have asthma it's all coming from my dystonia attacking all my muscles so I would put masks over my mouth nose face etc because of uh, also sensitive skin but when it comes to uh, the, the, the regular test, it's not painful when it comes to the disc in your head. However, when you're having the prolonged video EEG, the weight of the hat is actually, after a while, it, it makes you feel so dizzy. It, it feels heavy and it's so tight. And to me, because of, uh, again, temperate surgeries for my baby shunt, replacing valves here and there, and having three burr holes and one of them is thinning out so my skull and scalp are so complicated so it is insanely painful to me to go through a uh, prolonged video EEG as well as I have occipital neuralgia which is one of a type of a headache that radiates from the occipital nerves exactly from here at its hard point from the back of the neck almost so any little trigger any little um, push into that area, it would prevent the most brutal headaches ever, and I would be having this headache the entire time that I'm having uh, this test because of the weight and the, the cap, the length of the cap where it is. So yeah, it was painful in my case. After the test is done, whether it's, you know, if you're having the regular one, you're just sent home, that's it. But if you're having the prolonged one, then you have, you can shower in your, um, you know, in your, the bathroom in your room. And um, after they remove the, the cap and they need to kind of cut it like a, like a cast, but not without a uh, saw. But they need to cut it and it takes a lot of time to lose those discs from your skull and because they're attached so firmly into the skull um, it takes a lot of time to remove them however I will tell you some tips about how to remove them in the next chapter so since the test is long and boring I recommend that you would go with uh, a list of recommendations for movies that you would have them either on your phone or you have your Netflix subscription renewed because it's so boring if you have a lot of visitors coming that's also nice um, a lot of phone calls um, also you know watching TV books um, the whole thing and then when it comes to washing your uh, hair afterwards um, I advise you to go prepared you have your own shampoo, even though hospital supervised shampoos, I don't like them. Uh, have your own shampoo, and if it's for um, dry hair, so it's kind of um, oily, uh, it's better. And then conditioners, to it will help those little um, cotton, because they're attached to cotton, and the cotton gets into the hair, and it's tangled, and it's nuts. And people who've been through this test, they know the pain of removing this. You will be ripping the hair of your skull like crazy and you'll go pull off the test to remove the stuck cotton into your hair. Uh, one of the tips that I've learned is to remove them with a soft brush, not a comb, soft brush and coconut oil or what kind of oils that you prefer. However, I prefer coconut oil. And gently brushing them off however even with that it takes three to five to seven washes it depends on how much they've used of that heavy chemical while they're attaching the discs to get rid of those uh, cut inside your hair 
and every time you would uh, comb your hair because they're stuck and they're as you've seen from test they surround your entire skull every time you would comb you would be like ah you know like there's something uh, stuck into your hair and you would discover more cotton and more more and more dry cotton to your hair every time you think you're free from them you will find more and the staff usually are um the the technician who is kind of trained to read the waves uh your pathologist may be uh also there uh nurses and then um of course the nurse's assistant they will be supervising you the whole time and again they will not intervene how to induce a seizure and why i have left this until the end because i know people are wondering what the heck is wrong with this woman who wants to have a seizure people going to this test usually want they want to catch a seizure because it's so difficult to go through the test if you're a mother, if you are a student skipping school for so many days you want to have results and then sometimes I would have this test done have no seizure activity and then after the test I would have a seizure I would be so disappointed like why did it happen like I wanted that seizure to happen while I was still hooked into that computer so learning the triggers and again I will be attaching the uh, my uh, epilepsy journal because it contains all the triggers and those triggers are um, different to each person to me I'm not photosensitive so even though with the routine regular test you will have a strobe of light and you will be looking at it I'm not photosensitive I will not get uh, an, uh, a, um, a seizure because of looking at it however it will provoke uh, migraines and that would last for several hours that could lead to a seizure so lights uh, lack of sleep not taking medication uh, coffee sometimes it can cause seizures because of uh, they would make you sleepless and fidgety but to me those are the main triggers so sometimes I admit I would go with sleepless nights and I would stay even within the test as long as possible without sleeping because even if that test does not really catch seizure activity within that time when the brain is sleep deprived, it goes nuts. So even between the seizures themselves, there's some epileptic waves. There's electrical activity happening. Even if the person does not have a seizure, you would feel like in the seizure mode, how we call it, the epileptics. And the video EEG or the EEG can catch that sometimes. People would have tonic clonic seizures and they wouldn't have anything and it would be epileptic seizures and not uh, psychogenic seizures and I've explained the difference between them in a video that I will be making. So because the discs are attached to your scalp and sometimes what happens with the test is that those discs are so fragile and they would move and they would just not catch the activity and it's happened to me and they had to redo them three four times and then attach the the cap all over again and sometimes the memory would crash and i was like okay where's the footage you know so there is some faulty techni technical stuff when it comes to the taste and then uh those discs are catching very small uh, electrical waves and they are amplified sometimes the seizures are coming from a place that's very deep rooted into the brain that they cannot catch so it's really hard that sometimes people would have multiple clear EEGs even with seizures and then one day even without having a seizure they would be like oh, oh there's a seizure activity 
or one day they would have a seizure and be like, oh, there's seizure activity. So it really depends. And also, when I talked about in the video, sometimes people would have a mixed seizure, and that's my case when it's overlapping com uh, psychogenic seizures and epileptic seizures. So this is the video. And I know people are shocked by how people may want to induce seizures and stuff. And I do admit that sometimes I did not take my medication, but it wouldn't be um, so much. I would be removing quarter pill of my medications and it would cause seizures or I would be delaying it for a few hours and kind of mix the hours. But because I would be in a safe environment, I would be like, okay, if something happens, I know I'm safe. And I'm not giving this like an advice to, for you to do. This is me taking responsibility for my actions, but this is what I've done. And to me it worked. And because I'm a single parent and I would be kind of like counting the days to go home, every time I would be having uh, video EEGs, I would go sleepless. I would try not to take my medication or delay my medication if it's the standard routine test after the test. I would have a lot of coffee. Uh, I would even watch stressful movies like or documentary something about war because even stress can cause seizures. And epileptic seizures, not only psychogenic seizures. So, yes, because people want to induce seizures and for the fun of it, it's painful. It's it's so much to go through for the mind and the body. But at the end. We are students, we have work, I have kids, and I just wanted to go home. This is the video. I hope you're all safe. I'll see you in the next video.